Okay, so really what we're going to do is look at, this, this piece here is looking at evidence and sitting it within the NQSF, okay? So, people have been through the NQSF and Dorothy, that feedback, yeah, you're right about the, the uh, document being wordy and in some ways it's not as accessible as it could be and to be honest with you, when it was published, when you open it again, there's things you change about it every time you look at it, that's the truth. But just to say on that, we, we are actually, um, through the VC Youth Officers, going to uh, request that uh, VC Youth Officers would consult with youth service providers and youth organisations and put together an options document. And the options document will be how to improve the NQSF, the product and the process, okay? So we've said from the start it's a live and a critical, or it's a live and, a, 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 I suppose, dynamic document, and that means that it's not just going to be left there, that whatever feedback needs to inform it the whole time. And I've often said this about the NQSF, you might disagree with me, but I think in many ways the NQSF and the process, the way it's been designed and developed, um, it's by no means perfect. It's quite imperfect in so many different ways. But in many ways it models youth work. And by that I mean it starts where the organisation's at. It's not about competition or league tables around youth services. Okay? It's around development, it's around critical reflection, it's around action, it's around progression. With the ultimate aim of improving service provision for young people, okay? which we're all about. Okay? So, looking at the rationale for the NQSF, as it is in the document, um, one is to provide a support and development tool to organisations and projects, two, to establish standards in the practice and provision of youth work, and I've said this in the past, and excuse the soundbite, but I think it's useful. The idea, and the, the question you always get about the NQSF is uh, the accusation, one size fits all. That's not what the NQSF is about or was ever meant to be about, okay? So the soundbite we use on this is the NQSF is about standardizing practice, not homogenizing it. We don't want everything the same, okay? We want to respect the diversity in theme the respect to diversity of organisations, of service provision that's out there. But we want people, with their, through their provision, to actually meet this, this standard. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do with it. And we think it's broad enough to kind of accommodate all, all that level of provision that's there. Uh, the third point, to provide an enhanced evidence base for youth work. And you'll see this again, another tactical inclusion in this document. We weren't saying to provide an evidence base for youth work. We're saying to provide an enhanced evidence base for youth work. Okay, so there's a recognition that we're not coming from no base, or we're not coming from a low base, but from my point of view, and I've said this before, it's quite a fragmented base. And the challenge is us all to actually work together, policymakers, funders, administrators, VC officers, youth orgs, youth services, uh, volunteers, come together to actually work in trying to advance youth work and to try and maximize its effect, okay? So it's not a, an us and them situation. This is about us all working together, okay? As a result, we're all in the room here today, okay? So an enhanced evidence base for youth work. So again, we're saying that there is an evidence base there. Ensure resources are used effectively in the youth work sector. That's fairly standard. I don't think anyone would have any problem with that. And then finally, to provide a basis for the whole organisational assessment. Okay, so quality can be an industry. We all know ourselves. And quality standards can be an industry, okay? It can be industry kite marks and all the rest of it. It can be league tables, etc., etc. That's meaningless unless quality is actually incorporated in provision and internalised in practice, okay? Mm -hmm. And youth workers are, are primed to be able to do that, okay? So quality is not something that should be imposed or alien to the organisation. It's about looking at the quality that's there and building up on it, okay? So, to high quality in youth work, to structure and support youth work, okay, to stand over and to stand up for effective youth work. And I've said this before, it's about challenging and advancing youth work. That's the way I would see my job, okay? Other people might see it differently, but that's what, you, what I would see it. And I see introducing quality and quality standards is to stand up and to stand over youth work, okay? <coughs> to recognise the ethic and duty to commit to and provide effective uh, youth work for young people, okay? If we're not about that, well then, we're not about youth work, okay? And we're not about the best interests of young people, okay? To move from the anecdotal to the empirical, okay? So just, I suppose, moving from the stories to the uh, things that are observable and having some theory in it as well, okay? So I would say that while I referenced Bernard Davis's book on the stories, really interesting book, youth work can't survive on stories alone, 
It just can't. It needs to have a kind of broader view of evidence and for, for that to be informed, okay? And what we're saying here is to claim, claiming the evidence so that we can evidence the claim. So, the evidence is there, okay? It's about refining it, it's about bringing it together, harnessing it, so we can evidence the claim as to what we do. Non-formal education, personal social development, et cetera, et cetera, okay? To provide a structured framework for youth work providers to articulate and assess practice through a common language, okay? And yes, there's quite a lot of jargon in the, in the NQSF, okay? But, you know, that's evolutionary. We'll grow in, grow out of it, okay? But what we need to try and do is to get a common language for what we do, okay? And to ensure and enhance effective youth work provision for young people. That's essentially what it's about, okay? If it's not about that, well then it's meeting other needs. But that's the net aim of the NQSF, okay? And that's something that everybody is committed to. So, evidence in youth work. I spoke about this before, about the con concept of evidence and you know, you're, you're needing it if you're accused. Okay, we're not approaching it from that. So, the point of departure in the third slide here, or the third point here, is the point of departure is that there is inherent value in the process and product of effective youth work, okay? There's value in it, okay? So the challenge is to support, structure, and substantiate this. So, to evidence the claims, through claiming the evidence. I think I said that already, but so good I had to say it twice. Okay, so to support, to structure, and substantiate this, okay? That's important. So, if we look at the evidential source, uh, sources used in the NQSF, and apologies for this, because this should be, uh, th this um, font should be different. Now, this is taken from something that John had put together before we met, okay? And he was talking about a kind of triangulation of, of evidence. One being consultation, one being um, <coughs> policy, one being practice, another being research. So when I looked at this, I looked at the NQSF, and I said, okay, well, how does the NQSF kind of fit with that? And actually, quite well, because in the NQSF, we have interviews with stakeholders, we have consultation, the implementation teams are there, it's a process that, that you're dialoguing through. <clears throat> in policy, we have the documentary evidence, I'll say a bit more about that because there's a bit too much emphasis on that. In practice, we have observations and practice, okay? And that's key. This is the first time that youth work, I've said this before, but I think it's really significant. It's the first time that actually youth work has been opened up, okay? The people are actually going in to observe what youth work is. And um, there's been no fallout from that. And I think the fact that youth work hasn't had that opportunity to show what it can do has actually led to its arrested development, okay? Because people are operating on an assumption or a hunch, you know, or they do this or they do that, or they work with this. But to actually see youth work in, in, in situ and to see youth programs being delivered, actually people coming in in a structured way is really important, okay? Because there's learning for everyone in that, okay? Uh, so I think that's the start of, 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 of something um, uh, really interesting that, that will inform the process. And then the middle triangle here is, to, is research. Now, and what we're saying here is the research needs to inform the relevant areas. And I said at the first part when I was doing John's slide, the research is a piece that we need to work on, okay? So it sits quite well, okay? If you look at other standard systems around the world, a lot of them are kind of quantitative tallies, okay? We got six for this because we had policies in sexual health. We got seven for this because we won five residentials. That's not what we wanted in the NQSF. We wanted a continuum. We wanted developmental. We want people to engage in it and continually develop, interrogate, assess reflect and progress, okay. So in um, the NQSF, the assessment piece, which you know yourself, um, the external assessment and the self-assessment are two sides of the one coin, okay. Now, there could be tension in that, and there can be tension in that, but that's the way it is, okay. We have a, it's based on self-assessment, but validated by external assessment. And I think it's working much better than we thought it would. Uh, there were all kinds of fears that it would um, cause huge problems. It hasn't had caused huge problems. There's a maturity out there uh, with all people, and they're actually engaging in this, you know, in, in, in a proactive way, okay? So self-assessment, as I said, is a foundation stone, and the external assessment uh, functions exist to enhance the self-assessment process. So the NQSF offers a number of snapshots taken over time, and the snapshots being the meetings, the implementation team, the continuous improvement plan, the progress reports, the triangulation of the documentary evidence, interviews with stakeholders, and the OBS on practice, 
Okay, so they're snapshots. They're kind of different pictures taken at different times to show the progress of the organisation. Okay, so it's not static. Okay. So the three primary evidential sources, they're a documentary review, okay? I'm not gonna go into this, but what we're asking is, are they clearly in place and effectively employed? Okay, the documentary review, this is something we anticipated from the start. In all standard systems, what happens is uh, people produce a lot of stuff for them, a lot of portfolios and a lot of pages and references and policies and position papers, okay? We were aware of this from the start, okay? And you know, all, you could get a gifted graduate in to actually and give them six months and employ them, and they could produce a suite of documents for you. Fine, okay. But we need to ensure that the documentary evidence, that less fixation is placed on the documentary evidence, okay? Because it tends to kind of draw so much attention, and we need to kind of put it in its place a bit, okay? And we need to look at the use of what's been produced in the documentary evidence, okay? So, as many people say, you can you can talk a good game. You can talk a good game through documentary evidence, and we need to bear that in mind. It's the other bits we need to kind of uh, give parity of esteem to. Okay. Focus, groups interview, focus group interviews with stakeholders. Um, you're, you're well aware of this, so we're asking how people are benefiting from their engagement in the service, how well the themes relating to the principal standards are in place within the service, and what could be developed within the, the service. Okay. So what are you getting? How are you getting? And how could it be improved? Okay. So that's key. The observations and practice I spoke about before and what we're asking there, as you know, is how practice supports the principles and standards and how the practice validates the position taken on the scale of attainment. Okay. So we've taken a kind of, if we just go back to John's uh, slides, we've taken in some ways a measured and proportionate approach to that idea of evidence because what we're saying is we have three sources of evidence. We have the documentary one, we have the OBS on practice, that are observable, and we have the interviews with stakeholders. Okay? We're asking young people, actually, what are you getting from this? Okay? And if we're not prizing what young people are telling us as an evidential source, well, then there's something wrong with the whole debate. Okay? So that needs to be prized. Okay? So uh, we've just uh, uh, put something out here. I'm not necessarily going to go into it. It's just trying to sketch out uh, what might be in place the evidence in place to support the prescribed indicators for the core principle three, okay, and the indicators, okay. So you can see it here, clear information on the rationale, content and approach of service provision, externally evaluated programs, accredited courses, manualized programs, practitioner training for the first, the second, methodologies to suit needs, learning styles, styles and abilities, group work, creative approaches one-to-one. -one. Uh, in relation to the third, around program and curriculum provision, range of uh, response of health promoting programs, activity, recreational and developmental programs and interventions, um, and then project-based work, skills development, etc., etc. So that's what we're saying. These, these are entirely acceptable and appropriate uh, bits of evidence to actually produce. And this is what's happening in services that you're involved in, okay? So it's about kind of structuring it and putting it down, okay? Um, just curriculum. Does anyone have a difficulty with the idea of curriculum? That's a kind of um, what I would term a kind of a red flag phrase, curriculum. And once you mention curriculum, people say, oh, you're trying to do this, you're trying to formalise non-formal education, or bring in... Let me allay your fears here. The idea of curriculum, and I said this from the start, is your curriculum is your programme of work. At the moment, your curriculum is your programme of work, what you're doing, OK? And I've said this as an example before, the scouts wear the curriculum on their sleeves. It's a badge system, OK? So when we're using terms like this, you know, don't feel that they're a Trojan horse for something else. You know? Engage with them, interrogate them, ask. What youth work is not about, and some people perceive it about, is pizza and pool. Okay? It's a lot more sophisticated than that. Now, I'm not saying we have to get into this kind of formal education. So can, you can see the language being used here. There are tactical reasons and strategic reasons, and also reasons to actually accommodate what's actually out there as well. So I just wanted to, to ask you about that, because that tends to push people's buttons, the idea of curriculum. Um, for good reasons and uh, some not so good reasons. Okay, um, so the evidential matrix. We spoke about one uh, evidential matrix. Um, this is the original <laughs> evidential matrix um, on the NQSF. Um, and John has done his on the kind of research piece, but we put this together to try and kind of map exactly in relation to 
the NQSF, what are the sources of evidence we have? Okay, just on one page for that core principle three we're talking about, educational developmental. And this is entirely acceptable and appropriate. Okay, you can see, uh, we read through this already from the documentary one, the observations on practice, clear planned, structured and evaluated programs, competent delivery of session, operation of group drop-in, high level of knowledge of material and ability to deliver same. Okay. Evidence from stakeholder groups, practical learning at my own pace, it was fun and interesting, uh, where we can explore the issues that interest us. I'll be interested in further programs if available. Okay. So these are kind of fictional, okay, but we decided to put them in there to show you actually what is, what is acceptable and appropriate evidence in relation to the NQSF? Because a lot of people seem to be guessing about it. What does the VC officer want? What's my organisation want? The board of management want? What's the department want? Okay. So this is an example of, of what we think is entirely appropriate. Okay. So in presenting evidence in the NQSF, and this is something about presenting evidence in the NQSF, but also in the, the, prog or the department reports, the progress reports that you feed back at the end of the year around your objectives, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What we would suggest is that in the assessment process, both external and self, it is important to ensure that the presentation and the validation of the three sources are accessible, okay, succinct and clear, that they're realistic, balanced, and proportionate. Okay, no showboating. Do, do what you can do. Do what you say you're going to do, and do it. Okay, they're collaborative and constructive. Okay. They're not like a Trojan horse for anything else, okay? Again, based on the idea that it's a better learning process. So the evidence should aim to be recent and representative. It should aim, I'll stress aim, to be factual and, um, and objective rather than solely judgmental or impressionistic. However, subjective pieces need to inform that as well, okay? Practitioner wisdom and judgment, okay? It should be specific rather than generic, okay? Uh, it should be time-related rather than open-ended, okay? And it should link and, uh, and build upon all the sources of evidence. So there should be a sense that this program is actually linking to that, that program is linking to this. So your outreach is looking at your drop-in, your drop-in is looking at your programs, stuff that you're doing already, but just putting that kind of connections to things to show that things are structured and there's a, a development and progression there. And the last one there is <coughs> focus on impact and outcomes. As, as well as process, okay? And that's important, okay? Uh, and the focus on impact, just to say to you again, the focus on the impact and outcomes does not mean we disavow the process, okay? But it's about taking a kind of two, a, a, a two-hander approach to that, that we respect the process, but we're looking at the out outcome and impact as well.